Hi, welcome to my studio. I'm Nancy France Vaz. In this episode of Unframed, I'd like to go over the planes of the head and why knowing them with autonomy is really important when you are painting or drawing a portrait or a figure. Back in the 90s, I went to School of Visual Arts and I had this great mentor. His name was John Frederick Murray. And what John would do with 30 people in the classroom and beginners coming in all the time, he would hand you out these Xeroxes and always do a lecture. And in the lecture, he would explain what the planes of the head were. Now, when you got these copies and you looked at it, you said, oh my God, how do I, what is that? It looks like a road map. And he would very clearly indicate all the different planes and how they relate to each other. And then when you were drawing, he would use it on the model. And so as you're painting and you're drawing, whether we were at the Met copying an old master painting or, you know, drawing from the 19th century sculptures, he would have us very lightly draw the planes over the whole head or the figure if you were doing the figure. And he did both. Uh, one side would be portrait, the other side would be figure. And he would get to everybody and everybody would have this Xerox clip to their easel. Now he got those um, Xerox copies from his teacher, Frank Riley, who was at the Art Students League back in the 50s. And the greatest thing about these planes, they're very similar to Bridgman, is you're thinking of everything in three-dimensional space like a sculptor. So if you're doing a head, it's the front of the box, the side of the box, the top of the box, underneath the box, so that when you start a drawing and you know the rhythmic relationships, you can automatically get form turning right away. One of the things that I see uh, a lot of students do that don't understand, and even professional artists that don't understand this, they just know anatomy and so things kind of look mechanical or collarbones are in the wrong place. Sometimes the head will look flat against the background unless you want it to be that way like Klimt. Sometimes in my paintings, I try to get the form to turn, but when you're doing a two-dimensional background, it could become quite difficult, but you're still thinking of what's in back of the head, try to create air in back of it. So after you memorize this, you would take your drawings or your paintings back to your studio, and whatever was wrong in the drawing or painting without the model there, you could basically draw it again from your head and using these planes, figure out what you did wrong in your drawing and your painting. And the next week when you came in, you would just apply that. Um, it's unbelievable how till today I still use that method. It, it's in my head. So when somebody's sitting in front of me, the first thing I think about is where's the corners of the eyes? Where's the side plane of the head? Wh which way is the head tipped? Is it forward, back? Is it tilted to the right? To the left, is it turned which way? The three T's, where's my center line? And how does the side planes relate to that? Um, the tip and tilt refers to the underplane and the top plane. Very important if you're painting and drawing in perspective. But the side planes, key. If you have a head that's turned and you have a big side plane, how much of the side plane do you see on the other side? And where do things line up? Where do, do they interrelate and interconnect and flow into each other, especially in the figure, in hands, in feet? You need to think of this. Now, I'm going to leave a link below of a book or two that I recommend that I have in my bookcase, and I recommend really getting a library of books together that all have the same information, they're just stated a different way, but it's, it's all the same thing. Um, or you can leave a comment below and I can email you my Xerox copies. Now, if you're very into the planes of the head and structure and knowing them and improving your drawing and painting, I will be doing a Zoom workshop in July that you could sign up with from my website link below. So without further ado, let's get started with the planes of the head. So here's one of the Xerox copies I was talking about with the planes of the head. So as you can see, it looks pretty complicated and you always think about boxing it up. So from the front view, where it's dead on, we call it, equal on each side. So, you know, it's two thirds, three thirds to two thirds, and then three quarter view, 
profile view and you could see that in all of these the planes are the same but they're not they have a different shape but they are the same just that when you turn it to the side you have to try to figure out what it lines up with so the first thing you would get is something like this and what you're thinking about is the shape of the head so everybody's head is different some people have a rectangular shaped face some people have a square face some people have a triangular face a heart shaped face um, you have to determine what is the shape of the head that's the most important thing forget the features forget the eyes forget the nose if you don't have the shape of the head you do not have the portrait so if your uncle was about two blocks away you would you would recognize him immediately because of the shape of his head there are no two shapes alike. So it's like fingerprints, it's the same thing. So first you decide what is the shape of the head. Then this is the top part, the cranium, and this is where the mandible would come in and it's a hinge joint, um, you know, and it, it goes right where the zygomatic, right under the zygomatic by the ear canals where it inserts um, the muzzle really important you get your center line the muzzle usually falls from the center line of the nose and starts to come out and that's where the face protrudes out the most so you're thinking of that right away and then of course your halfway line which would be your eye line depending on if you were above or below eye level now here is where the planes get tricky you got five planes so you have the side planes on each side if somebody's directly facing you the oblique plane into the front plane of the head. And the oblique plane starts in the end of the eyebrow to the beginning of the eyebrow. This whole front is the front plane, which the nose, the eyes, and the mouth fall on. All right, let's get even more complicated now. It sounds complicated, but once you understand this and you start putting these construction lines over your drawings in the beginning, you'll really get it. So this is what I would always have taped to my easel. There's even one for the ear here. And you have front view, three quarter view, profile view. Now look particularly in the profile view. So you have the top plane of the head, this plane right here. It comes around. This is all the side plane, which then connects into the neck very important when you're looking at somebody in profile to understand the placement of the neck because a lot of people don't get that right. And if you understand that the neck, let's say in here, the neck is coming out of where the side plane of the face ends to where the ear attaches. Look at that, the neck goes right in. And that's what I'm talking about with relationships. Um, here's the muzzle right here. So Here's your center line, this is the nose form, and the muzzle goes right over that. In here, here's your philtrum, which is your lip area that leads to the cupid of the lips. And I always look for that to be the center line. That's You can really nail it, and where the little center of the nose in between the nostrils, that would hook right into the philtrum. So this is called the teeth cylinder, and then the chin form. So there's all these different forms that relate to each other. If you're looking at three quarter, well, here's the side plane. Starts at the end of the eyebrow, corner of the eye. So if you have somebody, a model in front of you, always look for that, especially if it's in shadow. And I'll show you a couple of, not only a drawing I did from a cast, um, but a couple of paintings I did to explain that. So here's the side plane. It ends by the corner of the eye. Now, the oblique plane comes right after that. So if you're drawing something from the front, like here, here it is. This would be the front plane, but look what happens. It starts to turn off, and that's your oblique plane, which then becomes, look, the side plane. So these are the angles of the head. Now, you don't want to draw with round lines because round lines just don't um, hold up. The old masses drew with straight lines and that's where you get more structure and more believability and it won't look cartoony or more like an animation. Um, if you look at going back to the three quarter view, 
So here's the oblique plane. It ends where the eyebrow ends and comes around here. The whole center of the head, the center or front plane, is the eyebrows, the corner of the eye, the nose, brings you right down to the chin form. Now, the corners of the mouth don't line up with that. They come past that to the middle of the eye. When you're drawing a nose and you want to figure out where the corners of the mouth are, you would just indicate where the side plane of the nose is, get the muzzle here and then the teeth cylinder here. You can figure out where everything starts to turn down and look, there goes the corner of the mouth on this angle. So let me move this forward here. And here's a drawing I did from life. I'll take this down so that you could see it better. This is a drawing of William Shakespeare that I did from life. And it's a blocking stage, how I first think of it. And then the second pass of it, I have the finished drawing of that, but you don't really need to see that. Um, I just want to explain this and then I'll go into a painting and how it all relates together. So what I first did, if you think of Barg, it was all done with very light lines, very angular. And as I'm doing this, I'm already thinking of the planes of the head. So I get the whole outside shape. I figure out where my center line is and how everything relates. Here is the side plane of the head. The way I set this up was that the light was in the front and this was all in shadow. So I put that shape and that side plane in immediately. The second thing I do is now indicate where the shadow and the eye socket meet and come in to get the shadow shape of the nose. And then if you follow the shadow shape, it then comes back this way. The light is hitting from here, right? So what's going to happen is the shadow is always at a right angle to the light. And then all the forms are going to follow that. You're still going to have the shapes standard, what they would actually do, like where this zygomatic is. This is the labial fold, teeth cylinder coming in to meet the underplane of the chin to make this happen here. So now here's my block in, and I usually do it all in one direction, or if I do it back and forth, I'm going like this and I don't lift my pencil off the paper so that I get a very smooth look. So once I had this here, I started to block this in, and only when I had this correct and the proportions looked right, and this ellipse looked right to me, did I get that in. And as you can see, I'm concerned about the shadow shapes and the flow of the light with the proportion and then the side plane of the nose, the under plane of the chin. So you're thinking planes through the whole process. Let's go to a painting now. I did a painting. I'll show you a block in of a painting that I did of a friend of mine named Victoria. She's also a painter. And so this is a block in, and I was doing a demo at the San Gundy, and I wanted to do a practice run with her. Um, and so I started this and timed myself two hours. So this is how I would start, really simple like this. And even though there's no detail in it, what you can see in this is that there's structure in there. And it's not refined, it's, it's just a block in. It's how I start, but I want it to be sculptural immediately. So here we go. Lit from the upper left. You can see I'm thinking of the forehead into the side planes of the face to turn it. From the eyebrow to the eyebrow is the oblique plane. Notice this side you can't see it because the hair covers it, but there goes the angle. So this would be your center plane or your front plane. This is the oblique plane, which then goes into the side plane. And one thing, especially when a head is in three quarter, you want to be thinking of that side plane. How much of it do you see? 
just a little bit right there because you know it ends right where the eye ends, right? And where the eyebrow ends. And then here comes the zygomatic plane that comes in to meet the nose. The underplane of that on each side will meet that, but watch this. It also meets the corners of the mouth. Here I indicated where the teeth cylinder is right away because I wanna get where the corners of the mouth are in the right relationship, and they're usually on that angle. So knowing all of these side planes, oblique planes, side plane of the nose, under plane of the nose, really important to get that in. A lot of people don't have that. It's very simply stated here, but you get the idea of the form. Let's move on to the finish. So this was done from life and then I took it to my studio and finished it. And here is the finished painting of her. So I started with um, raw umber and I got my background in right away, but you can see the strong planes of the head into the underplane into the neckline. Um, notice that the side plane and underplane of the nose, so it turns, and then you have a form under here. There was a lot of bounce light. I was in the Salmagundi and it had a double light in there, so it was really, really difficult as opposed to the former painting I showed you was um, the lighting situation that I uh, did in her studio, so I would have a practice run with it. Um, but even when doing the eyes, you know, with, if you know the planes, you can figure out that the oblique plane stops here, comes down, moves into the eye socket, think of eyeglasses, and comes around, comes in on an angle like this, comes in on an angle like that. If you know those shapes, you can pretty much nail it. Let's do one I did a painting of. One of my favorite guys and favorite paints, Michael Harding. Um, so I started this from life at uh, the first face conference and uh, it was really difficult because the lighting in there. So I took a shot of him. I had started this and it was bigger and I didn't have enough time to do it. I should have done it this scale. So I just took what I did and I copied it, used it as a photo reference plus my photo reference. And then I completed this. I think this was like a uh, one and a half day painting or a two day painting. So in men, you could see the planes better. They have a lot stronger um, sculptural quality about them than women do. Women are a lot softer and you don't want to sculpt them as much. Although when women get older, they are more sculptural. Um, so that's why they say when women age, they look like little old men. And when men age, they look like little old women. All the planes become an array of mush. No, just kidding there. Anyhow, so here is Michael's side plane. You can see it very clearly. Hooks into where the corners of the eye are, the end of the eyebrow. The ear here, here comes the top of the zygomatic. It lines up with the top of the ears. The middle of the ear canal is the hollow of the zygomatic bone. And then here is where your mandible would hook in. And then you have this whole jaw area that's separate from the skull, the cranium. Um, same thing, side plane of the nose, top of the nose. Where is the other side? You can't see it, but you have to indicate Whatever you do see, even the side plane here, there's a little bit of a side plane, a little bit, you, you do have to neutralize. And I think in this one, I could have even neutralized this a little bit more, but I didn't have a great shot, but I could actually go in right now and uh, fix all of that. Um, top of the head goes into the skull. The top plane of the head has to turn around. The hair fits into the skull. So you have to make people believe that and that there's air in back of him like in this one you you can feel that it goes from the front and it starts to turn towards the back and then he has this uh really great hair you know with the the wave on the top the long hair um and then I neutralize the background to make it have more depth to it last one sergeant so 
Sergeant knew a lot about the planes. We're going to tape this here. Sergeant knew a lot about the plane, so look at it. Here it goes. Side plane. Oblique plane. Now, the side plane, if it has heavy shadow, look how it hooks into the eye. Okay? And now, the half tone here, here's your zygomatic, the underplane of the zygomatic. And if I were to come around like this, it hooks into the corners of the mouth. Here's the side plane. He very clearly knows the shape of that side plane on the other side to get it to turn. Um, very aware of that, and you can see it very clearly there. He's very aware of, this is called the glabella, and it's a down plane. And then there is an up plane, and this guy has a bump on his nose, so it's going to come up. It's going to go down and then come up. And what the glabella does, it's like a triangular shape that has a relationship with the socket of the eye on this angle here. Um, also, the shape here of the shadow shape from the eyebrow, which is really important. It's the down plane into the side plane of the nose. You notice it's on the same angle. They are married together. They follow each other which then become the side plane. So you have a top plane and a side plane of the nose. And you have to know those shapes. Here it is again, the labial fold. How do you figure out where the corner of that mouth is? It's on that angle. It comes around the ball of the nose and the wings of the nose to the other side. So that's it for this week's lesson on the planes of the head. Thanks so much for joining me today on Unframed. In the next video, I'm going to be covering how to build a portrait using the planes. So if you didn't get the concept today, it'll be a little clearer to you the next time and your drawings and paintings will improve. So don't miss that episode. Hit that button on the right hand side and subscribe to my channel so you'll get every video that comes out. Also check out the link below. I'm on Instagram. Facebook, LinkedIn, and my website, you can contact me that way. And I also have a link for the books that I mentioned. So just let me know if you got the hang of this or not. If you have any questions about it, I get back to everybody. Signing off. See you on the next episode. Peace out.